Hey guys, this is Chetan for Gizmo Times and this is the ROG Phone 3 review. This phone, I've been using the ROG Phone 3 for about two to three weeks actually. I got it before the launch and I've been using this as my primary phone. Uh, the reason for this being my primary phone for such a long time is to understand if this is something for you guys who usually uh, are well adjusted to smaller devices, are well adjusted to lighter phones. I mean, there has been a trend in the previous times that phone should be as smaller as possible, as lighter as possible, as slimmest as possible, but everything goes out of proportion if we talk about the ROG Phone 3. So is it going to be a phone that you should actually buy if you are a regular user and if you still care about the performance of a smartphone? Now, firstly, let's start with the design itself because that's what is important. I'm not going to talk about the specifications because you already know the specs if you are here and you know about uh, the ROG Phone 3 from its launch itself. The design is quite good. I would say the design is actually brilliant here because that logo towards the back, this is not just a logo, it's actually an RGB light uh, icon and uh, it lights up whenever you have the X mode turned on and you can actually customize it to uh, light up based on uh, the mode, based on uh, different colors coming out from time to time. But the actual design is good, except that it's not easy to use. It's not easy for anyone to use for the first time. It's not easy to use for even a couple of weeks. But if you're someone who's buying the phone, you should in the end adjust to this phone because what you're getting here is not only because of its uh, design, it's mainly the internal specs that are going to matter. It's mainly the performance that is going to matter for you. So you might have to adjust to it. It's kind of a compact tablet. So it's kind of a seven inch uh, uh, tablet from the past from which all the bezels are removed and uh, it's just a big kind of a smartphone and it's not actually easy to uh, use it for a long time. But anyway, if you once adjust to it, it's going to be something that would be easy for you in the later time. And these kind of phones, you're not going to anyway switch to a newer phone uh, within a year or two. So once you get start, uh, I mean, once you start adjusting to it in a couple of weeks, then it's not going to be so hard for you to use. But 240 grams is no light uh, weight at all. Given the current times, I would frankly say given the current times, there's not much of a uh, going out for people. I don't really go out to even my office. This is my home uh, office studio. And uh, so I can say that for people who don't really go out, you don't, you won't really feel that this is a heavy device. It's for those who keep their phones in their pockets. That is when you would feel that, okay, there's a heavy phone in my pocket and it's not going to be easy. Uh, only then. Otherwise, if you're someone who's into gaming, who's into uh, not keeping your phone in the pocket for a long time and you keep using it, you keep it on, on your table, you keep it for charging, you don't really uh, actually notice the 240 grams weight here. Otherwise, it's actually 240 grams and uh, almost, I mean, almost quarter of a kg. So uh, it's not that light, but it completely depends on your usage. I would say if you are someone who's looking for an overall heavy package, heavy in terms of specifications, heavy in terms of the performance, you would also get a heavy phone in terms of its weight, but you would eventually end up liking it or you would end, end up actually adjusting to it. Now moving on to the next one, that's the display. Display kind of, I mean, uh, an overkill, at least for the current times, an overkill, 144 hertz. And uh, we've even heard that it's going to be 160 hertz and there has been internal testing done to it, but 144 hertz, is there really a need to it? Because the battery drain is high when you have a higher refresh rate. But frankly, I'm someone who keeps changing phones every week or two. And this is for the first time in the recent times that I've used a phone for over two weeks. But if I'm actually using a single phone for a long time with this high refresh rate, I won't actually get adjusted to anything else. If I'm going from this to my uh, cousin's phone, my actually family member's phone and use it for some time, I would feel like that is something from the past and this is actually a much smoother phone but at the same time 144 hertz is only going to be good enough for the interface or for the navigation because there are not a lot of apps that would support it not a lot of games as well games like dead trigger 2 they support it but are you going to buy a phone only to play dead trigger 2 that is the question here so i would say 60 90 and even until 90 is going to be good enough and it would actually save battery here battery life i'm going to talk about later but anyway I am talking about the actual battery drain here and it's not going to be huge in terms of uh, what is offered here, but still 
why do you want to even drain that battery only by navigating through here or you can set it at auto so that the phone can automatically understand that okay this is just the interface navigation and you don't really need that kind of a uh, faster refresh rate at that time and it would keep it at low whenever you're not using the phone much so that's one thing about the uh, display i would say 144 hertz is an overkill but who knows if you're keeping the phone for a longer time three to four years and till then a lot of games could be coming up with the faster refresh rates or the faster frame rates and then you would actually like the fact that it has a 144 hertz refresh rate and also it's an amoled display so it's going to give perfect color output and the x mode here uh, the animation of the x mode as well i actually like this animation you would see these kind of uh, colors coming out and you would feel like okay this now has got into the next level of performance that x mode is what i'm going to talk about next so uh, the os here is a bit customized from the custom uh, from the stock android itself but what you're seeing here is a kind of a customized UI with some features like the X mode. If you don't know about the X mode, it is something that is going to overpower everything. So usually when you are not using the phone with gaming in mind at that time, it's not going to use all the resources. It's not going to push the processor to the max. But when you are actually entering into the gaming aspect of it, you have the option of X mode. You can turn that on and everything would be pumped up the highest uh, processor level or the highest clock speeds for the CPU and GPU are going to be taken into consideration and so that there is no compromise to the performance when you are actually playing a high-end game. And performance, you know about it. You know that this is one of the best performing smartphones of the entire year or so far in the market of Android smartphones. I specifically am mentioning Android because you can't really compare iOS and Android here. iPhones have been one of the benchmarks for games like PUBG Mobile or for gamers as well you know every streamer uses this I'll go towards the end of the video and talk about the streaming part of it but for Android here this is one of the best performing smartphones even right now in the market so obviously there's nothing to actually say about this on the negative aspect and you can see this uh, lighting up of the logo towards the back with different colors when you have the X mode turned on and the performance is good I mean in the interface there was never an issue and even the connectivity added to the performance the two working together they make this phone one of the beasts in terms of performance this has wi-fi 6 support it has 5g support 5g obviously is not there right now but as i said earlier as well if you're someone who actually uses this phone for three to four years or more than that at a stretch you you might need 5g later you don't need to upgrade at that time because 5g is already in this phone if you have nfc in this one you have bluetooth 5.1 and the hyperfusion technology is going to take advantage of mobile data plus Wi-Fi together to give you the best of the connectivity. And the performance of the Snapdragon 865 Plus is actually at next level. So for gamers, this is going to be a paradise. It's going to be something that is really, really good. And for every game that I've played this uh, phone with, I mean, I've I've played almost like seven to eight games, uh, Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, Dead Trigger 2. Even I've played games like uh, there was a game named Yalgar and um, Free Fire, Fortnite. These are all installed in this because I have played all the games to test it out to see how it works and there was never an issue on any game. Actually, it also has the armory crate which gives you the real-time info of uh, what the phone's performance is, uh, what the clock speeds are and uh, what is the temperature of the device and what is the frame rate given when you are playing that particular game. Everything is included here. You don't need to rely on third-party apps to see if the phone is performing well, but that is only if you are a gamer. If you are not a gamer, if you are a regular user, you can still actually rely on the chipset to do anything such as 8K video recording at 30 FPS, 4K recording uh, at uh, 60 FPS, 4K, uh, 120 FPS slow motion recording as well. So everything can be done pretty easily without any lags, without any problems because of that chipset that is given in this smartphone. Now about the battery, this comes with the 6000 mAh massive battery and that is why this phone is that hefty and heavy. 240 grams is not without a reason. It has a 6000 mAh battery and the phone actually gives you at least 8 to 10 hours of screen on time even while playing games. So that is one very good thing about the smartphone. I played PUBG Mobile on this and without a break, I could easily play on this for at least six hours and there was no issue. The battery did not drain down to zero. That was another great thing about this device. So 6000 mAh is good, but 
Consider other flagships in its price range. Every other flagship gives you faster charging speeds. This one has the support for 30 watt and 30 watt charger is given in the box. But you can see smartphones from Oppo, you can see smartphones from Vivo, from Realme, every other brand has faster charging speeds up to 50, 55 watt, 60 watt. Asus has been maintaining that uh, the battery needs to be more healthier and that is why the charging speed should not be given at that extent. 30 watt is what they feel is good. In a way, I would agree with that. In a way, I would also disagree because you have given multiple uh, charging uh, solutions in this and uh, I would say you should have pushed even the charging speeds. Anyway, since the company is giving you the option of reducing the speed, the company has given the option of even setting a schedule that, okay, the, my phone should be charged 200% by the next day morning 8 a.m. So the phone actually automatically does all the uh, kind of uh, a slowing down of the charging speeds to make it to 100% at 8 p.m. so that the battery health is not worsened so when you're doing that obviously why don't you give faster charging speeds anyway uh, when a user wants uh, his phone to get charged faster he could have the option of doing that at least he could have that option there so that is not here and that is one disappointment for me faster charging should have been there otherwise the battery life is actually amazing on the rog phone 3 and about the connectivity options or the ports given here there's no headphone jack and it's not at all disappointing i might have said that fact about disappointment with no headphone jack on every other smartphone and that is actually something i i mean I would have always said that it's a major, major drawback for a smartphone, but here it's not that case. Since this has two ports, one port can be used for charging, one can be used for audio output and they are interchangeable. You can charge it from both the ports, you can charge it, you can actually uh, get the audio from both the ports and ASUS has given the adapter, the Type-C to 3.5mm adapter inside the box itself. So there's no headache and there's no issue there. So I would say I'm not disappointed in that aspect. Otherwise, I would have been for any smartphone from OnePlus, for smartphones from Realme flagship series like the Realme X3 and the X50 Pro, even the other phones like uh, the Vivo X15, uh, X50 Pro. So there are many phones that have removed the headphone jack and that is a disappointment, but here that is not. So that is one thing about uh, this uh, ports. And the next one is about the cameras. Sony's IMX686 sensor. The, the flagship sensor and the performance also good, but the entire combination is not so good. The second disappointment for me is this one. Uh, the wide angle camera is okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's not uh, great also. Uh, you can compare it with most of the flagships and it works good enough. And the third one, macro, basically useless. I would have actually chosen a telephoto lens, but the company has given this. You'll have to adjust to this. So with the cameras, I would say not hugely impressed with it. They are okay -ish and they are for, I mean, if you're choosing a flagship for its usage, I would say this is good enough. This is not something that you should compare with phones like the uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max and uh, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and say that, okay, the camera is comparable to that. It's not. So this is still not one of the best cameras in a flagship smartphone. But now let's get back to the final point, the gaming and streaming aspect of the ROG Phone 3. Now, if you are a gamer, this is a beast of a device. If you are a gamer who's only into gaming and uh, you're not into recording, you're not into streaming, then it's a beast of a device. But for streaming, I've actually uh, talked to some of the streamers already who have uh, used the ROG Phone 3. I've also super chatted um, streamers like Mortal to ask whether they have that issue of not talking to random players when using Elgato. It has the Elgato support for the uh, capture or the game capturing and streaming, but they also confirm the same thing. You cannot talk to random players there because your microphone cannot be turned on when you are actually streaming. You can talk to your teammates who are known to you. I mean, there are people who play with their clans. You can use Discord there. But if you are playing random games with random teammates, you cannot turn on your mic. Otherwise, the game audio will not be captured. This is not ROG's limitation. This is Android's limitation. But ASUS could have worked to remove that limitation because Realme allows that. Realme allows the capturing of both uh, the game audio as well as your microphone audio, but ASUS has not done it. So ROG Phone 3, I would say still is compromised in this one aspect. You cannot do a full-fledged proper streaming from the ROG Phone 3 unless you are only playing with your teammates and not doing any random games. So in a way, if you're someone who's into a clan, if you're into streaming, for, game, for gamers like Mortal, for uh, streamers like them, they don't play a lot of random games. They play with only their teammates and they can use Discord, but otherwise it's not going to allow uh, the capturing of the audio when you have your microphone turned on inside the game. So that is one compromise. The other one is the eight triggers. 
Air triggers is not a compromise. Frankly, it is one of the best features. This this time the air triggers comes with L1 and L2, R1, R2. There are two two buttons on the top, and you can check out our other video where I talked about it and where I showed a demo of it. Here I'm not doing to do a lot of it, but if you are into again gaming and uh, competitive games, uh, if you are into PUBG competitions, they won't allow these kind of things. They won't allow air triggers to be used. So don't get a lot adjusted to this. Don't practice a lot with these because. they might look good they are actually very useful for gamers but if you are into competitive gaming you won't be able to use the air triggers because that is not allowed at all so that is in a way for regular gamers for casual gamers this is going to be a great addition of feature but for someone who's into serious and competitive gaming this is not going to be something that is going to help you air triggers is not going to be allowed there so this was the full review of the ROG phone 3 only a couple of compromises as i said the heaviness of the phone the large size of the device and also uh, the camera combination a bit of a compromise and the unavailability of all the streaming options on it is the only compromised things that i could say everything else is a pro everything else is a advantage on the ROG phone 3 so that is why i would say it's a beast of a device with only a couple of compromises now the company can't change these things through software updates so obviously you are going to live with these compromises if you are buying the ROG phone 3 but is it a must buy if you are a regular gamer and if you are into regular gameplays if you are into also recording the games it's not going to be a bad choice at all and the performance on this one is not going to be beaten by any other android smartphone in the current times that i can assure you so that's it in this video i hope you got everything that you wanted to know about the ROG phone 3 and i hope you like this video if you do do share and subscribe to us more times for more thanks for watching and see you next video